Welcome, and in today's video we're going to finally explore Lake Conibus. In the last three videos we've touched on it and I have gotten distracted and jumped into other subjects. But today, this is the day. So I hope you enjoy. Somebody sent me this link saying I think the Lake Conibus is Hudson Bay. And they sent me this amazing picture, but I happened to pull it up on my phone. And when I went to pull it up on my computer, there was no comment by this person by the name of Fanny Haddock. And thank you, Fanny. I'm glad you left the full description of the link. And it looks like it's pulling it up now. And it seems like the things that are difficult to get a hold of sometimes are the most special. And I just know that when I was looking at it on my phone, it was just mind blowing. And here, Fanny says uh, this Hudson Bay may very well be Lake Conibus. And a pretty enormous file. Let's just bookmark this right away. And really remarkable. And just a beautiful picture. Even the clouds just doing some kind of amazing dance here. Not sure if this is a hundred percent real, but just remarkable. And I did have a little peek at it on my phone. And I'd like to go back in with the Google Earth, see what we can see. And perhaps Fanny is correct. And I'm enjoying this little mini quest within a quest. As it is ultimately just another puzzle piece. Just really interesting remnants of lands found all throughout. And perhaps all it would have taken was a rising in sea level. But many legends of people entering the Lake Conibus from the northern sea. And without getting too deep, really seeming like a lot more than initially meets the eye here. And to me, if you had a city on an island or several islands. There would always be a direct way down to the ocean. Everybody would travel in this direction, launch boats from this harbor. And here really seeming like that is what we're seeing on a lot of these old islands. And this just I don't know, as if some enormous rake has come through and just wiped out anything. Just reset on this island. But again, we'll have a closer look and really get in with the Google Earth tool and see what we can see. And here recently I just received a comment here. And he says there is a good chance that Lago de Conibus would be the southern tip of the Hudson Bay that people in Quebec call Bay James or James Bay. Hochilaga is Montreal and Saguenay is still used as a region of Quebec. The James Bay has islands. Akimiski being a rather large one. And he tells us that half of the island was turned into a bird sanctuary. He says the bird sanctuary trick. Just like national parks and all these protected or supposed protected areas are oftentimes just to keep us from looking any closer. And he gave us a really nice link here of a map in 1597 
and thank you for that comment this is an excellent lead and we can see the first specific map of central Canada and the Conibus region and let's just have a little look here and really amazing and here we can see Shilaga seeming uh, like Chicago as we've talked about in past videos Hochilaga now this being Montreal as the commenter just mentioned and many others in the past and up here we have our Lake Conibus and we can see that in present times this may be it and here could be the Lake Conibus and with a little bit of swelling of the waters well this whole area now could just become flooded out and just this little nub this little nub here is what we're seeing like a little finger of the Hudson Bay and that may have been Lake Conibus but in a lot of maps uh, its position seems a little bit more southern and western from here but still really bearing a resemblance and really matching the criterion and here what do we have is a nice island just as the commenter suggested the Akamiski Island and half of it is a bird sanctuary and very interesting this is the first time that I will have a look at it right now and a bunch of lakes here perhaps this is the bird refuge and really just seeming pretty ridiculous right off the get-go the excessive photoshopping I mean really really excessive not even natural water color and these beaches and the edge of this land meeting the beach I mean just just a big Photoshop mess and who is this courtesy of I'm always interested in who the maps are given credit to it's always down here and this one looks like some private company um, NOAA which is a government US Navy and here we go so six of these people came together to give us this map I mean we don't even need a satellite to get an accurate map we just need an airplane to fly over it and here you know here it took six uh, agencies and private corporations just to give us this bogus map and what a joke what an absolute joke and so you know this just leads me to what was I looking for in this exploration was some kind of signs of civilization or some kind of ruins or or just anything and what do we have here is just a big messy clearly manipulated Photoshop job all around this island just looks like a cartoon and here a bunch of other fascinating ones but we'll have to try to have a look at some past dates and this is just all really interesting and I'd like to try this back at the shop where the internet is good and maybe that would help but really remarkable I'm very curious to explore this area and this could just be full of star forts that have not been discovered and speaking of star forts since I'm not really getting good resolution here for exploration. Let me see if I can show you this most recent star fort in the Hudson Bay. And I featured this in my last video, but I didn't show it in the Google Earth. And let's have a little look at it right now. Just right, not far from here at all. And shabam. So here we go. I mean, this is kind of what you know this coastline looks like and again just a lot of Mickey Mouse coastlines here just a big Photoshop job and there's something really interesting right here that I want to show you too but first let's have a look at this star fort 
there she is. A butte, really remarkable. Just in the middle of nowhere here, this little, this little nub of land. And really, I don't even know if there's roads. Well, it does say there's an airport here. Of course, a repurposed line. And this star fort, and really even this artificial coastline here. I mean, this, uh, of course, is uh, as artificial as could be. I mean, why would somebody come out here? Okay, they'd tell us this is a major port. But nevertheless, you know, here is this star fort. And I'm glad it remains. Again, I think that many of these are probably very difficult to destroy. And that might be why they remain. Let's have a little measurement of this thing. So... Let's say from here, from here to here is 400 feet. 400 feet. Now that's a that's a massive building there. 400 feet. Um, for all you in meters, that's 129 meters. Really remarkable. Out here in the middle of nowhere. And, like I said, there was just a lot of anomalous things. Just this one little tiny corner here. I mean, we could just go nuts on this coastline. That nobody, you know, who's looking at this? And yet, right next to it, I thought it was interesting. In a past video, I once showed a line up in the North Pole. And it was as if the Googlers, you know, someone, you know, perhaps trying to do something for the good you know someone in a in a bad place doing something good and here's a little sneak peek here we go so you see this uh, joke of a coastline that they typically give us and this is a really cool really seeming artificial island but in any case seeming um, you know like a completely photoshopped coastline and then here we go a little peek a little peek of actually I'm not sure I'm not sure is this actually what the coastline looks like or is this what's under the water or is this a little island not sure but here it is and there's the coordinates down there if you want to explore it a little and I did try to go through it a little bit like what if this person wanted us to see something in here but I don't want to get too off topic. But right next to this star fort in the Hudson Bay. And recently somebody told me that Lake Coney Bus may have been all the way in southern Utah. Clearly there was a, a flow of some kind here. And I'd even imagine that it may have been in this basin here in which I reside and possibly up here but the reason I'm always brought back to the northern parts is because of this map this map by Mercador showing the most northern regions and what we can see here is the Lake Conibus to the west of the Hudson Bay and this just being a small depiction and I believe that on some of Mercator's maps he even shows the little town on the Lake Coney bus similar to the little towns that you see along here way back in these older times and even this being called the California region and here we can see a Zubi Laga a little town along the river and I think but here it is Zubilaga on this old map and we see the depiction of the town showing castles with Antiquitech on the top and the same thing here on the island in Lake Conibas so where could it have gone I mean it was big and it would have put it around here, really even further north than my thoughts about it being on Lake Winnipeg. 
However, once again, if we were to tilt north over a little bit, then we get this Lake Winnipeg, but still much too small. I mean, again, if we look at the map, a pretty substantial lake with an island on it. And last time I tried this, it did not allow me to see this much. And many people had talked about the shallowness of Lake Winnipeg. And I'm not sure if that's what we're seeing here. Some kind of transparency and old tracks underneath the lake. And, you know, usually Google is pretty quick to block out any such things, not allowing us to see underneath the water. And maybe this is a little slip up. And I'm not sure what we're seeing here. Could these be ruins? Casting pretty large shadows. Let's have a look at another time frame. And here's their idea of a full day. The shadows just seem to stay in the same place. Worthless. So clearly a lot of manipulation. Every single part of this looking tampered with. And this is courtesy of Maxar Technologies. And CNES Airbus. So there you go. One is from a plane and one is from some kind of technologies firm. And you see here, we have nothing in the lake. And then you zoom in a little bit and much is revealed. So really very difficult to make any kind of sense. And whereas this was my hunch, and then when we come in here, we can see that somebody else has already beat us here. Not sure what we're seeing. But I'm pretty sure we're not meant to see much. More so just to be confused. And the resolution is horrible. With what we are allowed to see. So we'll continue this one. And let's have a little look at something else. And here's a little something that I found in my spam folder. And Yolius Beats says, I'm just going to put this train story out here. You need to see it. They were destroying trains for promotion in an economic downturn. And he left a link. And let's just have a little look at this. America's favorite pastime. Live train crashing. On September 15th, 1896, two locomotives hurtled at full speed into one another, 14 miles north of Waco, Texas. Their boilers exploded on impact, tossed hundreds of yards of bolts and jagged metal and airborne shards in all directions, ultimately disfiguring countless individuals, killing a couple. But the estimated 40,000 spectators took this in stride. They'd paid admission to witness the event. And here's a little look at the crash. Chunks of things flying everywhere. Believe it or not, before the demolition derbies, live train crashing enjoyed its moment in America. From 1896 to 1930, stage train wrecks enjoyed wild, destructive popularity, similar to today's monster truck rallies. It was spearheaded by William Crush. He was a passenger agent for the Missouri, Kansas, and Texas Railroad. They created a city for a day. Event organizers drilled two wells, ran pipes for spigots, brought in tanks of mineral water, and set up lemonade stands. They also constructed a temporary restaurant, using a tent borrowed from Crush's friend, P.T. Barnum. This is something that I've been exploring on the side. Taking inspiration from the 1893 World's Fair, they erected a row of carnival games for sideshows. 
The temporary construction was topped off by a 2100 foot station platform for onlookers and a wooden jail for would-be pickpockets and troublemakers. So really our first red flag here is they are taking inspiration from the 1893 World's Fair. But it's certainly not buildings that they're parading around or showcasing as in the World's Fair. In this case they are showcasing trains and you know similar to the world's fair that you would build these kind of buildings and then destroy them well here this is our red flag this was taken from inspiration by the world's fair by some of the same players and just trashing things and charging an admission setting up tents and all the junk that we see around everything else and just trashing these trains as if, um, you know, there's an abundance. These are inheritors, spoiled inheritors, who don't even know what to do with things. Not even having enough people to use all the things that have been inherited, so rather destroying things, destroying buildings, uh, crashing trains into one another. Perfectly good trains. Uh, you know, if you built these things, you would never dream of just wasting them in this fashion. And here we are. The Duel of the Iron Monsters. And we're told that each train uh, blazed towards each other at 50 miles per hour. Creating an initial impact of 1 to 2 million pounds of pressure. And really remarkable. Many died. Many were disfigured and burned. But once again, the event would continue because it was a smashing success. Instead of dwelling on the casualties, the media and its organizers created a thirst for future events. So really interesting little share here. Just lending to this overall picture of what was really going on back then. And lastly, I wanted to show this little island that I just found somewhere in New York City and how we don't question these things. Who devoted so much time to create a little island and clearly this is in ruin. A completely man-made island shaped like a diamond in ruins. And I was having a little look, just right here actually, at this Fort Wadsworth that we looked at in a past video. And something I wish I would have mentioned is that not only is this fascinating, and the island in which the Statue of Liberty resides, but what is more fascinating is that this is built out onto the water, and how much more difficult would it be to create a structure and build it out onto the water? Now you have to build this massive foundation and just seeming like the more difficult thing to do. And yet this prior civilization could not only shape their sandbars, but also just construct little islands. And what story would be given about this Hoffman Island. It might be something that we'll get into in another video. But I just thought I would share that. So I guess that's it for today. I do apologize. We seem no closer to the mythical city on an island in Lake Conibus. However, it was a fun exploration. So I do thank you for joining me today. Do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.